welcome back to Vermont Craft Tours. I'm your host, Sarah Scully. This episode features the work of a brewer or distiller and is intended for viewers of Legal Drinking Age. Please enjoy craft beverages responsibly. Thank you. Once we started brewing at Von Trapp, we used a hundred times as much beer. It's, it's a, right. you know, it's a big difference. So now we're stepping up Tunbridge Brewery five times to five barrels, so we can do more at mm -hmm. Tunbridge to kind of meet what we do at Von at Von Trapp a little bit. Welcome to Vermont Craft Tours, with your host Sarah Scully. Today I'm here with my friends Chris and Andy. Hi guys, thanks for being here. Um, we're here at uh, Upper Pass Beer Company, and they're based out of Tunbridge, my hometown. And we're here to talk about their beer and their other ventures. So thanks again for joining me, guys. Thanks for having us. No problem. Um, so you both uh, started out in this industry in do, with uh, doing home brewing, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. And I wanted to ask, what was the catalyst that kind of made you go, ooh, we should do this professionally? We both hated our day jobs. Oh, that's, that's inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were already in beer. You were pouring beer. I, I, I was. I had uh, uh, some various jobs in the industry, and uh, Andy and I uh, had a pretty good bond over home brewing, and um, really just the, the, the right place became available to set up a, a little operation in Tunbridge. And um, mm -hmm. we uh, started out really simple and small with a few little ideas, and uh, it blossomed quite quickly into, uh, you know, being able to, to do large batches uh, Von Trapp Brewery and then also expand our brewing operations in Tunbridge as well. So mm -hmm. really uh, just kind of a, I guess, guided by fate, really. Right. So. That's great. Seizing that opportunity. Um, and you have a third member who couldn't be uh, with us here today. Uh, Ivan, what uh, role does he play um, among the partnership? Ivan, uh, he's also a uh, Ivan, uh, Czechoslovakian <laughs> name. Uh, he's a talented home brewer who joined our team right about when we started started going professional. So mm -hmm. he came in the right, just the right time to help us get some new equipment, turn things up a notch, and um, has really come on full bore. He doesn't commit as much time you know, on the day-to-day -day operations, but he likes to be involved in the recipe development and the brewing side of things, mm -hmm. and eventually wants to uh, be more even full-time with it. Right. You know, to kind of retire into brewing. Uh-huh, so oh, he's yeah. <laughs> become a, a core team member, as is uh, Tim, our uh, fourth guy. Right, yeah. okay, that's great. Um, so uh, you mentioned developing recipes. Um, I wanted to ask how much uh, experimentation goes on behind the scenes. Um, how, how big is that in your process? Or do you sort of know exactly what you want to do and just refine it a little bit? Uh, sometimes we set out with a, with a pretty straightforward uh, recipe. We just want to brew a you know, certain uh, IPA. Uh, and we kind of plan it out a few weeks in advance and set a brew day and go for it. Other times, uh, we'll say, hey, we just have a brew day, and uh, everyone might show up with different ingredients that day, mm -hmm. and we just kind of create something off the cuff. Mm -hmm. uh, that could happen with different fruit or vegetable, or, uh, you know, sometimes uh, some, some barrel aging takes place, or adding oak, oak to uh, the fermenter, or different, you know, mm -hmm. uh, fruit to the fermenter. So uh, sometimes we have, a, you know, a little bit of each, I guess, to answer your question. Sometimes a very straightforward recipe, like a, you know, and other mm -hmm. times... We'll, mm -hmm. we'll just uh, be more creative with the beer, depending upon right. how, how the time goes. Yeah, more of a stone soup approach. I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, and Andy, you mentioned um, partnering with Von Trapp. So tell us a little bit more about that and how you've been able to grow um, sort of as a small startup, but without having to have your own equipment. Yeah, you know, we do one barrel at a time batches at, in Tunbridge. So that really mm -hmm. limited our production. So we started, you know, floating the idea around of doing bigger batches of couple core products up there mm -hmm. and we started doing that it really helped uh, us get all over the state and it's become a full-time job to sell that much beer mm -hmm. it's limited how creative we can be and how much we can do at the Tunbridge Brewery but now we're freeing up some more time to get back into doing some more recipe development there and keeping all the fermenters full there because once we started brewing at Von Trapp we it's a you know, hundred times as much beer it's it's uh right you know it's a big difference so now we're stepping up the Tunbridge Brewery five times to five barrels so we can do more at mm -hmm. Tunbridge to kind of meet what we do at Von, at Von Trapp a little bit more because when we it's a drop in the bucket. Right. Um, so we really, right. uh, first drop and cloud drop get brewed once a month there mm -hmm. and they come out and uh, I'll show, I love your, keep um, us pretty busy. Your packaging, so I'll just show our viewers that. There might be that. one cloud drop left in the cooler. It's really pretty, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so that's owned by a local artist, uh, Mike Mullen, out of Chelsea as well. Oh, okay. 
that's great. So another another partnership, and that's something that's really marked. Um, I think your business from the beginning, whether it's working with local ingredients, the Von Trapp partnership. Um, you guys were doing brunches and working with local chefs. You have um, recently, I've been seeing on your Facebook, you do a lot of partnerships with um, selling beer at music events. Yeah, we really um, like the music. So that's great, that community tie-on. And maybe you can talk a little bit about also the, the recent um, fundraiser that you guys did with Brocklebank. We just, uh, Brocklebank and us together donated uh, $1,000 each after packaging and canning this beer at Von Trapp and getting it out there to this cause, which is preserving uh, land in Tunbridge against a cause that's kind of coming in aggressively to um, to, to grab land in Tunbridge. So mm-hmm. Together We Can is the cause that we supported most recently and um, something uh, we plan to do more of in the future. Yeah, that's really great. So it's part of your core mission, really, is to, to continue with this community to tie in and supporting other um, local crafters um, S- certainly, and community grow, members. Yeah. yeah, as we grow the brewery, we would like to involve you know more of the community uh, Perhaps as employees or partnerships with, uh, mm-hmm. you know, our, our spent grain. We'd like to go to local farmers in return. Kind of you know, uh, yeah, yeah, and kind of tie in with, with what's going on in our in our neighborhood. You know? mm-hmm. Not just be uh, making our beer and shipping it far away. We like to keep that local tie going. So right. it's important to us. Right. Yeah. There's been a lot of controversy, um, and we don't have to get into too much detail, but in the, the craft beer industry and a lot of, you know, small startups, um, like you say, kind of selling out to these huge conglomerates and sort of losing that community touch. So I can really appreciate that, especially in a small community of Tunbridge, which is, you know, 1,200 people um, that, you know, all those tie-ins that you guys are continuing. Two breweries. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Who will be, uh, we'll we'll be chatting with Ben and Ann in a future episode. So look for that. Um, So in addition to beer, um, you guys are also doing coffee. So tell me about that. Uh, Well, uh, let's see. Uh, Andy and I uh, also share a pretty strong interest in, in coffee and roasting it at home. Uh, I began doing that at, at a apartment I have and lived here in South Realton. Uh, and uh, Andy uh, and I met and started home brewing and uh, mm-hmm. he, he uh, thought that was pretty cool, uh, I guess. So he got his <laughs> own roaster or thought mine was terrible. And he said, I'll show you how it's done, I'm not sure which. But either way, he, uh, he, he definitely uh, got into home roasting. And uh, you know, we, for a while, we just did it on a hobby level and it was, Great having your your own uh, fresh roasted coffee in mm-hmm. your kitchen, uh, so definitely our love for that um, kind of grew from there, and, and we uh, had the brewery space, uh, a little extra room available, and thought it'd be nice to kind of get something more serious in the way of equipment and mm-hmm. produce uh, better results than our, our kind of little startup uh, machines we had at home. So we invested in a, a roaster there, and uh, which is a pretty nice model, but still quite small. It's mm-hmm. a good kind of a tester one for home use, but now we have a, a, a full 30-pound uh, roaster here at our tasting room for Upper Pass beer and First Branch coffee. So so we thought it'd be great to, uh, you know, put a, put a roaster in here and kind of serve the community this way, uh, expose them to, uh, you know, great uh, single-origin coffees and have a nice espresso uh, machine here for drinks on that and mm-hmm. sell them uh, bags of beans to go as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we've... Uh, uh, kind of have a, a few good partnerships with uh, importing beans from uh, a variety of countries, some out of Africa, and uh, uh, actually one of the VLS grads here uh, started his own importing company uh, featuring beans from Papua New Guinea. Oh, interesting. So, so we've been dealing with him, and then uh, yep. a great uh, little place in uh, New York City, Brooklyn, that uh, has a great connection with Ugandan farmers. Mm-hmm. So we, uh, we thought that was kind of nice as well to you know, deal with some smaller scale farms and kind of bring that mentality, which seems very prominent in Vermont, uh, right. you know, bring that it's into still, the coffee scene here. It's local to them, since we're not tropical, we can't grow coffee here, so, but it's yeah. still that local origin aesthetic. Yeah, exactly. that's great. Same I really thing, different, that. different continent. Yeah. yeah, exactly. We have like a two pound roaster in the mm-hmm. brewery right now that we're mm-hmm. moving to the hills of Tunbridge, and the roaster right here is a 12 kilogram roaster, so we'll be able to do 25 pounds at a time, which would be real nice. nice. To, nice. You know, it's a really nice roaster, and uh, yeah. it'd just be great to supply fresh coffee to the community. We've been doing a little bit of cold brew in the summer, but not really getting a lot of product out because it's a small roaster we have right now. Right, yeah. right. But and I've been always up. nagging Andy, do you have cold brew for me? Because I, I love it. I make it at home myself. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, so we're going to taste a couple of the Upper Pass beers. Um, what do we have today, Chris? Uh, let's see. We have uh, our flagship beer that we make at Von Trapp. Uh, this comes out on a monthly basis. Uh, we, we do uh, we brew about 200 barrels and yield about 100 70, 
160, 170, 165. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. uh, barrels of beer, mm-hmm. and uh, like it's mostly canned and then some draft as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're shipping this uh, pretty much to all the corners of Vermont, um, mm-hmm. and uh, and then just a tiny bit of it goes out to New York State as well, just to okay. with the appetites of uh, our neighbors, you know. Right. Uh, can you so get it if you live in New York City? You can actually. Ooh, okay. And, and Brooklyn as well. It's great. I'll I'll let the professionals do the pouring Even here. Yeah. And Even some Buffalo. Buffalo. Even like two Buffalo. pallets, have arrived, two pallets a month go to New York about, and they get spread okay. out across the state and to some interesting spots. Mm-hmm. And then it's just a double dry hop, you know, pale ale, sort of mm-hmm. on the IPA edge, juicy and uh, hazy. Yeah, I love it. Yet some nice malt color. It. It's it's sort of what Vermont's known for. Um, and thank you. And uh, cheers. Nice so they can see the lovely color. Looks like orange juice. Mm-hmm. I guess you could have it for breakfast. <laughs> mm. It doesn't taste like orange juice, though. No, no a little more adult than orange juice. Mm-hmm. Adult orange juice. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> so, what's the? Is there a primary one? Primary hop in here? Uh, no, there's um, a, a pretty much a balance of uh, Azaka, Centennial, Mosaic, and uh, Citra. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and we. Uh, we mainly dry hop with those varieties, and there's a, a little bit of uh, uh, Apollo for bitter. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Citra and Mosaic are a little more forward in the recipe for the dry hopping, mm-hmm. but uh, Zaka's right there with them, and Centennial's a little bit behind, but I'd say uh, mostly those four just yeah. kind of, uh, and we add them at unique times in the uh, in the boil. Mm-hmm. We're not unique, but really heavy at the end. Mm-hmm. And, uh, we yep. dry hop it twice. Uh, oh wow! Unique stage, yeah. perhaps in the fermentation. So you're getting much more of the so. of the aroma, um, and not as much because it's not very bitter. It's I would call it more spicy, really, mm-hmm. than than. And, and bitter. that's having almost like a raw hop, mm-hmm. a little a character from the just a palate flavor. Right. Um, that kind of it kind of goes in at the uh, you know different times of mm-hmm. the fermentation when it's finishing and and also uh, uh, before it's uh, cold crash. You, Kind of yep. put the, the hops in at two different times, uh-huh. and uh, that last, that latter one really imparts a huge aroma flavor to it. Right. But the hops we use in the actual brewing process are, are pretty minimal, mm-hmm. um, especially in the bittering department. So mm-hmm. mainly, mainly they're done for flavoring at the end of the end of the brewing or the end of the boil cycle. Right. They get bitter from boiling, so you put like this much in in the beginning, and they boil for sixty minutes, and that gets bitter, and then you put that much in at the end. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. that gives you that. That nose. And it's still yeah. not, you still mm-hmm. get some bitterness from that, but it's a lot yeah. less because it, it's um, how, how bitter they are combined by how right. long you boil them for. Right. So it's kind of a cool little equation. Yeah. Yeah. And our home brewers appreciate that too. Lovely. So this is our flagship. Um, we've kind of kind of launched mm-hmm. uh, with this is our first uh, major beer that we did yeah. at the Von Trapp and we did some test batches uh, here I was going to say, I remember, I do remember the dial-in process for this because mm-hmm. it took a little while and there yep. were a few different iterations before you guys kind of on the recipe. Yeah, it definitely uh, has progressed a little bit mm-hmm. as, uh, you know, into becoming what it is now, but it's uh, got a pretty good reputation around the state and a number of fans, mm-hmm. so we're pretty much going to keep it as it is, you know. Yep. I think we, if we got uh, the beer that we want to drink mostly mm-hmm. you know, all the time, kind of just reach for it. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'm biased because it's always in my fridge, but <laughs> well, it's, no. Uh, no, it's no, no. you know, the, the right, right alcohol level like and it. the right amount of flavor. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Kind of that's nice. I, what's and tell us a little favorite. bit about, um, my glass has foam in it now, but tell us Lacing. a little bit about your, your, uh, your logo and your awesome. new glassware, your hip new glassware. Mike, Mike also did the logo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, like from Mike Mullen, who was in Woodstock at the time working for a, um, a company, but we, he's now on his own. Mike Mullen, um, is a great illustrator. Mm-hmm. We paired with him on designing it, and Chris and I sort of had a vision where the teardrop was a drop of water, mm-hmm. and the, uh, the brewery is right on there, and you're sort of looking at, down at the pond by where Chris lives, you're, you're looking up at the brewery, so, mm-hmm. and in the mountains beyond that, which would be, you know, higher elevations beyond us in the North Country. So we have the brewery in his house, his house would be there, the brewery's right there, and it's sort of a, uh, a vision of looking up at that, with right. water being the essential element to beer. Right, and, you know, of course. Which brings yep. us to you know, some little tweaks we made in the water chemistry with the beer along the way. And, mm-hmm. you know, the fresh yeah. water of Tunbridge, which is pretty nice water. Yeah, it is pretty nice water. You're on an old farm and site. And water as well. Yeah, you're on an old farm site at the brewery, which is actually is a funny story. Um, it's actually the site where my sheep mentor used to live. Um, and so that brewery building started out as a woolen mill. Um, she was washing fleeces and carding and um, had a felting table and everything. 
So I used to go in there and work and help her with that. And then mm. it was great um, to, you know, she left for the Peace Corps and kind of left the area, but it was great to see another craft thing, even though it was very different, uh, kind of move into that space. Washing grains instead take, of uh, take ice. Take over, yeah. yeah. <laughs> her, her picker used to um, uh, expel uh, the fluffy wool into where what is now your cool chest yeah. area. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's great, you know, we're using, we're using spaces. Okay. So All right, so we're going to uh, try another beer from you guys. Um, this is Little Farmhouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so tell us about that. This is a Saison that we brewed at Von Trapp after brewing three times in Tunbridge. Um, this one dried out pretty nice, finished at about 6%, which is a little stronger than we were initially shooting for, but uh, those French yeasts are pretty dry. And we um, combine that with Belgian yeast and a little yeast blend. So it's, we kind of want to showcase the yeast with the Saison, put a little bit of hops in there as well, mix of American and a French hop. And we wanted to go with something a little peppery, a little refreshing, not so hoppy. And that's what we made here. So uh, this is the little farmhouse. We might do mm -hmm. some uh, darker Saisons and some other Saisons in the future. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Get some nice esters. Nice aroma oh, yeah. from the yeast. Yep. That's definitely, definitely a yeast a... forward beer, but mm -hmm. some bitterness. A simple grain bill with Pilsner and wheat. Mm -hmm. And again, a little bit almost spicy. Mm. Yeah, the spice, even more spicy than mm -hmm. the other one. You're kind of looking mm -hmm. for the spice to come through from the, the yeast blend. It's really nice. And also uh, complemented by the American hops, almost adds like a little bit of bitterness from that. Right. Like a little bit of a uh, yeah. little hot flavor it's, too. It's November here now. Um, but this will be great on a hot day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Next summer we're gonna make a, a really low uh, alcohol version of it. Mm -hmm. Just Lawn good lawnmower. lawnmower beer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that's where saison comes from, right? Is it? You know, my understanding is it was what you would serve uh, to the guys working out in the field uh, in just exactly. summertime, and so yep. you'd want a low alcohol, refreshing kind farmer, of farmer beer, farmer lawnmower, lemonade lawn, sort of beer. Yeah. Beer kind yeah. Of thing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It means seasons. So sometimes they brew them stronger, but they would typically mm -hmm. brew a beer big enough. Um, in April to make it through the summer into the fall. That was, you know, 6%, five, you know, so it was mm -hmm. light, but not too light. Um, table beer, similar thing we like, bringing mm -hmm. it down even to the threes and fours, but mm -hmm. that would vary a lot between different. Right. What, and just probably what the, you had on hand too. It's also yeah. kind of a kitchen beer that's like, mm -hmm. oh, I have some of this, I have some of that. You could add rye or different adjuncts right. and have fun right. with it. Yeah, yeah. Rick's uh, made a couple of these. Uh, he made one with maple sap. A couple of years ago, that was really nice. Oh, yeah. So was it? It didn't really taste particularly mapley, but it was just a nice undercurrent of sweetness that was there. Yeah. And if you sort of knew what the secret ingredient was, it was like, oh yeah, I can yeah. do it. Yeah, sap has a nice characteristic. That's it not does. necessarily maple flavored, but a little bit of sweetness. That yeah, you can definitely. Yeah, and a little bit of um, like kind of a coating mm. uh, quality on your tongue mm. in, yeah. in a pleasant way. Yeah. Nice viscosity. So, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so we're actually here. We're not in the brewery. Um, we're here in the tasting room, uh, which is not yet open. So thanks, guys, for letting me crash in your, there, your space. Kind of catty corner bar. Right. Um, but this is so this is going to be where we're doing coffee and having tastings. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is a coffee cash register right where we're standing here. Okay. Yeah. And the espresso here. bar will be over there. So I will not here be making in, your espresso because I don't know how. But there, <laughs> and in that corner, will be uh, a beer tasting and get beer to go in crowler format mm -hmm. and also cans of our beer. And every once in a while, we'll be able to do pint nights, probably two, three times a month. Right. And you know that'll be that'll be really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you think about live music in here. And yeah, a little bit of live music. Mm -hmm. and some, some more uh, community feel again. Getting back to that theme. So yeah. Nice. Some good local That's food great. and small small amounts, but good. Yeah. Good. So. Um, Plan open in February. You know, yeah, right? February 2018. Yeah. So that's your that's your really your next big project. Yeah, we're doing a sprinkler system in this whole building, so that's gonna take a little bit of time. That's happening yeah. in early January and. Dial in the espresso machine and mm -hmm. get things rolling. And yeah, it's this winter will be yeah be a great great step for us forward having uh, a local retail space where mm -hmm. we can connect with you know people face to face, which right. is uh, huge for a brewery. You know, trying to mm -hmm. make connections with, with people and then also expansion at the brewery to be able to do large batches to mm -hmm. keep the taps here supply and, and the retail demand here going. Right. So uh, a busy yeah. winter is and good for us too because you know I mean. Somebody's got to drink it all. Well, somebody's got to drink it all. <laughs> right now, we can get you in a lot of our local restaurants. Um, True. And a local co-op just down the road um, usually has your beer. But it would be nice to, yeah, just to be able to come, the wall, in, huh? come yeah. in and, and get it straight from the source. Yeah. Um, it's, always, it's always great to be able yeah. to you know see the people that are that are buying and supporting mm -hmm. us, too. It's uh, 
kind of nice on our end. You can sort of monitor a little bit online, but it's just nice to be able to, you know, right. meet face to face. It's, and it's, chat nice, with it's nice when you shit. work, you know, just either by yourself or maybe with one other person to really meet your customers. I talked with another farmer in a recent interview about that, how, you know, it sort of gets lonely up there in the in the <laughs> shop by yourself, <laughs> just true. stirring the kettle going, okay, yeah. well, you know, somebody, likes, somebody it. likes it. Yeah. <laughs> and then you get to know, oh yeah, they really do like my beer. Yeah. That's it great. is a nice pat on the coffee. back. That's, yeah. That's true. It's good. Um, so folks uh, can, uh, I see you very active on Instagram and Facebook. That's probably yep. the best way we to have, keep We have social media for all those and we're updating the web pages. So yep. there's so that's, Instagram for First Branch Coffee and Instagram for Upper Pass Beer, a Twitter, mm -hmm. and a Facebook presence for those. Yeah. Um, and then we're, we're working on kind of updating the webpage and let people know where the beer is more and let people mm -hmm. know more details about the tasting room. Good. That's all coming together. That's great. Yep. Yep. So we'll link to all that in the show notes for this episode too. So um, thanks again, guys. An interesting story that I want to tell you about oh, why sure. Saison's in, in a bottle, typically. Yes. Uh, not always, but is that uh, people used to, in French, uh, France and Belgium, used to put it in recycled champagne bottles. And, uh, ah, so that, that makes so that's sense. Kind of why. I almost always see it in the big bottles, yep. too, in yeah, the stores. So that trend continued. It was, wasn't yep. like a ritzy thing. It was more a, a mm -hmm. poor thing that you know, right. seasonal people were making, you know, making beer and uh and right. putting in what they had around, which is right. sort of like a I've got this thing. nice heavy glass bottle when I yeah. use it. Yeah, exactly. That makes sense. Cool. Thanks for that. <laughs> bit. Use, that use that in the homebrew of the show or something. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, well, thanks. Cheers. Uh, thanks for being with us, guys. And thank you guys for being with us. And we'll have more on brews and brewing. So subscribe to the channel and stay with us. <laughs>